Hello friends, this is Wilson of the Nutriaxis. In this video, we go over a design example of a steel column and compression using the AIC design tables. We're going to determine the available strength and compare them to the required strengths using the ASD and LRFD design philosophy. This is a great example of what you may see on a PE exam as well as a design task at work. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, the problem statement tells us to determine the size of a wide flange steel column, A992, so that's the material of the steel column, of size W12, so a 12 inch nominal steel section with the following compression loads, a dead load of 16 kips and a live load of 110 kips. And it tells us to use either the ASD or strength design philosophy. So in this case, we're going to be using both the ASD and strength design philosophy. And uh, in the diagram below, we can see that it's a pin and at uh, each end. So it's a pin pin steel column, uh, wide flange steel column of a height of 16 feet. So that's the embrace length of the column. So there's no indication that the column is braced along its height. So we have an embrace length of 16 feet and it's under axial load uh, or axial compression. So now that we have determined that, obviously the loads are not factored. We're given the loads in, in based on load categories. So we must factor those loads. So I'm going to write down in here calculations to get started. And in the calculation section, I'm going to write an embrace length of 16 feet. We already know that information. So then we can go ahead and factor those loads. So we have a delt load of 60 kips and a live load of 110 kips. In that case, using the ASD design philosophy by inspection, our governing load combination will be delt load plus live load. And if I put that in there, PA equals delt load plus live load, that will be 60 kips plus 110 kips. So a total of 170 kips. And using the LRFD or strength design philosophy, that will be PU equals by inspection will be 1.2 delt load plus 1.6 live load. And when I plug in those numbers in there, it will be 1.2 times 60 kips plus 1.6 times 110 kips. And if I do a quick math in there, that will be 248 kips. So we have determined that. Um, we have determined our required strengths for the ASD and LRFD design philosophy. So we can go ahead and, and go into table 4-1, which provides us the available strength in axial compression of different steel columns, steel column sections, and we're going to be using this table to determine the available strength in axial compression and compare those to our required strengths under each design philosophy. And when we look at this table, currently I'm using the 14th edition of the AIC manual on page 4-12, which should be a similar page regardless of the AIC manual edition that you're using, let's say 15 edition or 13 edition, should be similar. We see that this table provides us available strength for specifically for a yield stress of 50 KSI. So if your steel column has a yield stress of 50 KSI, then you can use this table. And it's important that you must have this, you'll be using the same material because these available strengths considers um, all of the limit states of uh, steel column and axial compression, which is depending on that material strength, on that yield stress. So if you don't have a 50 KSI yield stress, then you shouldn't be using this table. Uh, but we, that's our case. We're using this table. And uh, particularly in this page, this tells us that these available strengths are specifically for 14 inch nominal depth, or W14. And just to briefly, explain what this table provides us. It provides us the ASD and LRFD available strengths. And we can see that it's provided for each steel column section. So it'll be a column section of W14 by 730, a W14 by 665, and where these large numbers essentially are the nominal weights of the steel sections. And uh, as we go from left to right, we can see that the available strengths decrease and in a similar manner, as we go from up to down, the available strength also decrease, and it's because it considers the effective length of the column, KL, where K is the effective length factor, and L is the embrace length of the column. So we already determined that embrace length of the column is 16 feet in our case, and K for a pin-pin column, that will be K equals 1, 
as we already know for a pin pin column and we can verify this from table C-A-7.1 so we must be looking at a product of KL equals 1 times 16 so it'll be 16 feet and when we go along this particular row 16 feet we can see the available strengths for different column sections now the problem statement is asking for a W12 so a W12 we must flip the pages and I'm physically doing this and showing on the screen as well we can go ahead onto page 4-18 so in this case is where uh, this is some of the W12 sections in here and, and when we go to row 16 we see that the available strengths are pretty large so we can see that a W12 by 190 has an available strength of 1300 1, kips using the ASC design philosophy but we want an efficient design so we don't want any column that just works we want to be efficient in our design and uh, our required strength in ASD is actually 170 kips so why choose such a large section so let's go ahead on the row of 16 feet from left to right and go into the next pages until we find an available strength that is approximate to 170 kips using the ASD design philosophy and when I go ahead to page 420, 4-20, it looks like a W12 by 40 with an effective length of 16 feet has a, an available strength of 171 kips. That is very close to our required strength of 170 kips, so I'm not going to choose that one even though it works technically, but in, the, in reality, you want to be a little bit more conservative with your design. So the next larger section will be a W12 by 45 which has an ASD available strength of 193 kips so PN using the ASD design philosophy PN over Omega C which is the strength reduced available strength in ASD is 193 kips and when I compare that with our required strength of PA of 170 then we know that a W12 by 45 works because the available strength is greater than the required strength. So that checks out in the ASD design philosophy. Now doing the same thing on the right next to the column, phi C PN, so that will be our available strength in LRFD, equals 290 kips. And when I compare that with our required strength in LRFD, which equals 248 kips, we can see as well, we can inspect that the available strength is greater than the required strength in LRFD as well. So that means that considering both design philosophies, a W12 of 45 works and that's our final answer.